the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless God. We appreciate God. And as I welcome you to our service, I'm so grateful that you have tuned in. You have created time to walk with us as we go through the word of the Lord. And I want to welcome you in his presence. So let's open with that of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I would like to thank you. I'd like to bless your name. You have been so good. You have been so kind and merciful unto us. Dear God, if it was not of your mercy and your grace, Jehovah would have been consumed by our enemies, by the enemy, Jehovah, when he lost against us. But your grace and your mercy has preserved us, O God Almighty. I would like to say thank you even for my viewers, dear Lord, that you have given them another chance and another opportunity to hear and to listen to this message. Dear God, use me to minister to them thy word. And Father God, give them the understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen and amen and amen. Welcome, welcome once again. So grateful and so thankful to the Lord for the opportunity. As I always say, it is an opportunity and it's a chance uh, that God has given me to minister and to preach this gospel of the kingdom. It is a calling, it's a gift from above that cannot be acquired by human uh, strength or human uh, ingenuity, Paul said in the book of Galatians, the first chapter, a first of scripture there, first number 12, I believe he said, for I neither, first number, first number 11, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. And uh, the true minister of the gospel, the true man that is called of God, then he doesn't. I preach that which man has dictated on him and that which he, they are instructing him for to preach. Uh, but it is, has to be from God. First number 12, the scriptures say, For I neither received it of men, neither was I taught it. Uh, he is saying that whatever he received, and this doesn't uh, 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 ignore or not appreciate the matters of the gospel, them that have mentored uh, some of us in the gospel, Paul mentored Timothy and Titus. So, but he said it has to be taught from the inside. It has to be from the inside. Uh, taught by the spirit of the living God. And For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ, in other words, it has to take uh, the calling of God and the teaching of God. As again, Jesus said himself in the book of, in the book of John, the sixth chapter and first number 45, as it is written, it is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. In other words, this gospel, uh, for an individual to understand it, they have to have the spirit of God touching them, uh, helping them to understand it. Even for this minister of the gospel, uh, for him to be effective and to be a blessing to the people of God, then I realize and I know and I'm aware then it has to be given from above. It is, not give, it is not acquired from another man. 
Neither is it acquired from a group of individuals, but it is a, a calling. That is why a man cannot receive anything. Uh, in the book of uh, John, the third chapter and verse number 27, a man, this is John, uh, when they, verse number 26, when his disciples came unto him, and they said, and when they came unto John and said, and they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. Uh, these are a group of brothers that they did know the operations of God. But a man cannot occupy any office in the ministry, in the economy of God, be it even on the face of the earth in the secular world. Uh, to have any influence and to have any position, it has to be given from above. But for them, they thought that you have to acquire it, you have to fight for it. But I like the response of John in verse number 27. He said, and John answered and said, a man can receive nothing. And that is the bottom line, whether it is in the ministry, uh, whether it is in business, whether whatever area, whatever sphere of life one could be operating in, the scripture is saying a man cannot receive anything. A man can receive nothing except be given to them uh, from above. Uh, so you find God becomes the source. Uh, so whatever gift you are given by God, uh, then we become stewards. We become stewards. As a minister of the gospel, I recognize and I am aware even the, to the ability and the opportunity to preach is because I've been entrusted uh, by God. It is God himself who has given me that opportunity. Uh, in the book of First Peter, the fourth chapter and verse number 10, uh, first of scripture lie there, the Bible says, as every man have received the gift, uh, you receive the gift from God. This gift you don't receive from an individual or from two or three individuals that are seated somewhere uh, deciding who to give the gift and or who to put in the ministry or who not to put in the ministry. Uh, but it comes from God. It says, and as every man have received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. Uh, so you say whatever you have received, it is a gift, whether it's even uh, good health, or whether it's sound mind. Remember, uh, you could be in sound mind, you could be in good health, but there's somebody, even maybe a relative or a family member, but is ailing, that is not feeling well. A uh, neighbor or a friend, somebody you know, a colleague, uh, that they could be going through hard times. But here God has honored you and he has given you a gift, a gift of good health, a gift of sound mind, and a gift the ability to put food on the table for your family. And this is a gift. And the Bible is saying then as good stewards, uh, you become a steward of the manifold grace of God. Manifold, it means that grace of God is manifested in different ways, in various areas. It is not only one thing. Uh, that is why we need good health, uh, but also we need grace to be in sound mind. Uh, we need also grace to be able to put food on the table. It is a man for grace. So the grace of God is not confined to one gift or to one area. And that is why the Bible is saying they are prophets, they are apostles, pastors, teachers, and, and evangelists. These all, all of them, they have received this gift through the grace of God. They are different gifts. Uh, so you find as a child of God, then we need to understand. Uh, that you find a child of God is making it in whatever department, and another one tried that department, they didn't make it, but they went to another department and they excelled. Uh, it is the difference, manifold the grace of God. It calls an individual uh, to operate in one area and another individual to, offer, to operate in another area as, 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 as good stewards of the manifold grace. And verse number 11, it says some of the graces and some of the gifts that are operating. He said, if any man speak. So now to speak as an orator before people clearly where people can hear you and even understand what you're saying. He said, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. When you stand before God's people, then it has to be according to the gift. It has to be according to the grace of God. If any man minister, that is to serve, uh, to serve, to minister there, it is not in our, like in our day, a meaning where they mean a minister is a senior most person that need uh, and commands respect. A minister in the word of God meant a servant, somebody who was uh, serving tables, uh, somebody that was, uh, uh, was uh, in service of somebody else. Let him do so as of the ability which God has given him. In other words, even to minister, to be a servant in the house of God, to be a servant. 
in whatever area it is a gift is among the manifold grace it is among the gifts that are given by the grace of god that all and all these things are the different graces the different gifts that men are operating in the bible is saying that that god in all things may be glorified through jesus christ all everything that we have Everything that you have received, as I say, said, whether it is good health, like now you're in good health, and if you're not in good health, we'll pray and you'll be all right, and God will give you that gift of good health. And what that, when you have that gift, then you're supposed to use it for the glory of God as a minister. It is a steward. I think First Corinthians, the the fourth chapter, uh, first Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and first number one, uh, the scriptures say, let, let a man so account of us as of the ministers. This is Paul writing about himself. And every man that have been called of God into the ministry. And he said, let a, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of, the, of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Stewards of the mysteries of God. In other words, as a child of God, you become entrusted. A steward was an office that was on trust. It was held on trust. Uh, the, 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 the master would trust this man and entrust him with his goods. Uh, he would give him his goods, his store, the key, so that he can give lessons to the family because he had the store keys. Uh, so that when the food is needed for the family, the steward, he was a faithful man. He would know the issue. He'll, he, he will not waste. He, he, he will not waste the, uh, the, the privilege and the, the trust and the confidence that the good man of the house has bestowed on him. And it was required in this man then, being a steward, I think we'll come back here and we we'll go to the book of uh, uh, Luke, the 16th chapter and verse number 1. Uh, the scripture lies there says, and he said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. He had wasted his goods. In other words, a steward had been entrusted. It's a man has been, that has been entrusted with somebody else's goods, not his. And he has been put in charge to dispense according to the required uh, 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 qualification or required needs. He doesn't waste. He doesn't give more than is needed. Uh, he, he doesn't waste. And here Jesus is saying, this rich man had a steward, which and the same was accused unto him, but he had wasted. That is the word. He had wasted because when you become a steward, then it will require for you uh, to be very, very faithful because that stewardship, you are given the liberty. Uh, to go in and out of the storehouse, uh, to get everything you want. Now, it also accords this individual who is a steward an opportunity to be unfaithfulness, to be unfaithful, dishonesty. Uh, because nobody is coming to counter check what, what, what is there, what is remaining, and even when you remove it, how are you using it? And so it not only uh, 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 portray the confidence and the faith that the rich man has with these, uh, on this uh, steward, but also it accords this steward an opportunity of being dishonest. Because he has, he has access of everything else. It is like a child of God. They are in good health. They, 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 can't, they, they don't think giving an account of their good health and, and sound mind matters anymore. God wants you to be in the church house. God wants you to support that ministry. But because you are okay and nobody is checking you out, then you start wasting. You start now misusing. Embezzlement. That is what we would call the embezzlement. Because you are using it in not the correct way. You wasted it. So you find uh, this child of God that have been entrusted. Instead of using it in the light way, they start wasting it. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, in the book of uh, uh, Proverbs, the 18th chapter, verse number 9, the scripture says, wasting it. God has given you. And that is why you don't follow other people to do what they are doing. Because you don't know the gift of God over their lives. If somebody said, today I'm not going to church, my brother, don't say, if you're not going, I'm not also going. This time I'm not going to give my tithes. And you say, I'm also not going to give. No, you don't know the grace of God that has been bestowed over your life. And it could be different because it is different. Uh, it is different. Is it quickly? I go to the book of Ephesians, the third chapter and verse number seven. This is Apostle Paul 
Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual. Let me read Ephesians 4, verse number 7 again. And it says, but unto every one of us, every one of us. That is Apostle Paul, he said, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So grace is different. The measure of grace to everybody is different. We can never be equal. And that is why you cannot say, because sister so-and-so is doing this, brother so-and-so is doing this, I will also do it. And if they are not doing it, I will not also do it. No, remember, the measure of grace is different according to the gift. He said, but unto every one of us, that is Apostle Paul, including every other saint in Ephesus. He said, but unto every, and that is what I want to say, that God has called all of us. We are not the same. All of us are not the same. We are different one from another. We may be members of the same church. We may all have believed in Jesus Christ. But all of us, we were not taken to a factory and we became copycats of each other. No. We, we, we are different. Uh, we cannot be a copycat. I cannot be a copycat. You cannot be a copycat. Not even a, a husband and a wife. Grace is different. Praise the name of the Lord. Grace is different. So, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Every one of us. And that is why we don't compare ourselves with each other. Uh, 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse number 7. We, we cannot compare ourselves. For who maketh thee to differ from another? That is the thing. We are different. And what makes the difference is the measure of grace. And when my grace, my grace has to be equivalent to the gift. And you have your gift and the grace has be to be equivalent to the gift. And if I'm not operating in your gift and I don't operate in your office, I cannot have the same grace with you. I'll have another measure of grace that will make me fit in my office, fit in my calling, fit in my gift for who make thee to differ from one another. We are different in the church house. Every Christian, all of us, we are different. We may have believed the same Christ. We may have believed the same gospel. We may have believed uh, the same preacher uh, when he preached the gospel, but the gift, the grace is different. Because we are not all of us the same in the operations of God. For who maketh thee to differ from one another or from another? And what hast thou that thou did not receive? That is the thing. And what makes us the different is because I have received something which you have not received. You have received something which I have not received. So whatever you have, whatever gift you have received makes you different from me. And whatever different I have, a uh, uh, gift I have makes me different, different from you. That is why now we acknowledge each other. Uh, you, you find a brother behind a camera. That is a gift. You give to somebody else who is supposed to be an usher in the church. They cannot handle it because they don't have the grace. Yet you take that man who is behind the camera recording a message and you tell him to be at the gate as an usher. It will be too much for him. And he will break. Because he doesn't have the grace. And that is why the Bible is saying, And what hast thou that thou did not receive? A man, remember, we learned about John. He said, John said, A man cannot receive anything except it be given to them from above. So what is that that you have? That you would say you never received. You received it. And he's, now he said, Now if thou did receive it, why do, dost thou glory? Then why are you glorying? Why are you so proud and cocky? Uh, as though, as if thou didst not receive it. As though you never received it. So if you received it, then it is required of you. Because God gave, you, gave it to you as a steward. And it is required in that stewardship that you become faithful in that office. Praise the name of the Lord. So there is nothing that a child of God or in any individual has that they can say, this one I didn't receive. The life that we have. The good health, the salvation is a gift. Now you are supposed then to give that or you will be accused of wasting. You waste your goods. You waste the opportunity. 
It has been entrusted. A singer, you are a powerful singer. You are you supposed to use that, not to abuse it. You are supposed to use that for the glory of God. And if you don't do it for the glory, use it for the glory of God, then the bottom line and the conclusion is you wasted it. And that is why now we're in Proverbs, the 18th chapter, and verse number 9, the scripture says, He also, that is slothful, lazy, don't want to work. They have been empowered. They have been put in an office of a preacher, of an evangelist, of a whatever position. God has given you that office, but this individual becomes slothful in his work. And the Bible says, he also that is slothful in his work is a brother. To him that is a great waster. Look at that, you become a slothful, idle man that has been given a gift and has been empowered to operate in a certain area. And if they don't operate, then they are called slothful, lazy. And they are like, they have a slothful man will not tend to his office. He, 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 he will go to other places, but he will not, he will leave his jurisdictions. He will leave his responsibility and go start yakking and talking and visiting people. And yet his office is neglected. And that is why he is called a slothful man. A slothful man is in the book of Songs of Solomon, the first chapter and verse number six. That is a slothful man. Look not upon me because I am black. Because the sun have looked upon me. My mother's children, that is the saints of God. Remember, the church is called Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Church, uh, Jerusalem. So every saint in the house of God is your mother's children. Because Jerusalem, for which is from above, is the mother of us all. The church become the mother. The church becomes the mother. Praise the name of the Lord. So now he is saying, my mother's children are the saints of God that you operate with, you work with in the church, but they're in different departments, they're in different calling, they're in different gifts of God. He is saying, those, my mother's children, were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, not mine, theirs. He said they were angry at me and they made me to keep their vineyards. But, listen to this, but mine own vineyard I have not kept. That is a slothful man. Now, what, when you don't keep your gift, when you don't keep it, operate within your area, then you become a waster. Now, this man, he left his vineyard unattended and it went to waste. And now that is when now the leech man comes and says, what happened? Because I hear you have wasted my vineyard. You have wasted my gift that I gave you. You have wasted. So this man becomes, a, he is slothful. And he is a brother of a waster. A great waste, <coughs> waster. So at the end of the day, it will be like you never even had anything. You know, Billy recognize that you did anything, yet God had empowered you. Grace had been given. Praise the name of the Lord. Grace had been given. Back to the book of Luke. The 16th chapter and verse number 1. And he said unto us, to his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted. And I, 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 I have explained that. He had wasted his goods. Not, his, not the steward's good, but the rich man's good. God's property. Anybody that have anything. Remember, it is God's property. You are just a steward. Verse number two. He said, and he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account. Once in a while, you'll be called as a child of God by God himself. And you have one-on-one -on -one talk and he's saying, Can you give an account of this, thy stewardship? I have entrusted this to you. I have given you this opportunity. I have given you this chance to serve. In the church, as an elder, to serve, I have given you an opportunity to work in that company, in that institution where you are working, in that factory, in that office, so that you can get some little money. And at that money, if I never gave you favor, you are not going to have it. So it is mine. I have given you grace and have caused you to have 
grace and to find favor with the management and the directors of that company and they have given you a job. It is me who have done that. Now, I want you to be a faithful steward. That which you earn, you use it for my glory. You use it to further up the gospel. You use it to glorify and to praise my name. Because if you don't do it, he is saying, for thou mayest be, mayest be no longer a steward. In other words, you may no longer continue to serve. You may no longer, and that is why it is required in stewardship. Now this man be found to be faithful. Let's go back to the first, uh, uh, first Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And first number one. We were therefore let a man so account of us of the, of, as, as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. First number two. He said, moreover, now look at that. This is, this is Apostle Paul said, moreover, it is required in stewardship that a man be found faithful. That means that gift that you have been given, you use it faithfully for the glory of God. You don't abuse it. You don't waste it. Serve God with whatever God has given you. Make sure you use it for his glory. You use it for his honor. Hallelujah. You use it. You use it so that, so that when he, if, if, if in the event, because you'll be required to give an account, if you are not able to give an account, remember he said you may no longer. If you don't convince God, many people, some people will lose their jobs and uh, they'll start complaining, they'll start murmuring and charging God foolishly and God in heaven, he said, no, it is you. I entrusted you with this. I gave you grace and favor, but you wasted the opportunity and I removed you because you, as Jesus said, you may no longer be a steward. Why? If you are not giving an account of your time, an account of your good health, an account of your blessings, over uh, the blessings of God over your life. If you are not able to account for every minute that God has been with you, God has favored you, God has blessed your life, then Jesus is saying you may no longer. So it will be determined by what you do with that time. Whatever leeches, whatever blessings that God has given you, it will be required you give an account, and that is why Apostle Paul, writing to Timothy, he said in 1 Timothy, the, the sixth chapter and verse number 17, he is saying, charge them that are rich in this world. And leeches, we are not talking only of money, but you are, when you are in good health, you are rich. When you are in sound mind, you are rich. We could be having people who have cash, but they are not rich because they are poor. They say they have money. They say we, we have fat bank account, but in them, they are wondering, what are you? You, you, you yourself, you're just seeing the, the money. You're just seeing the good car. You're just seeing great things that they have, but in the inside, in the inside, they are not. They are poor. In the inside, because money, money is, doesn't answer all things. Money doesn't ask all things. Maybe we can put our finger in Timothy and we go to the book of Revelation uh, as, uh, qualifying that statement that money doesn't ask all things. Uh, you may be having money, but you're still poor. Uh, Revelation, the third chapter and verse number 17. The scripture says, uh, verse number, verse number 18, 16, uh, he is writing to the church of Laodicea. This church of Laodicea is what is presenting our later day church. So because the church members, they are, war, they are now, they are not, they, they, so then because thou art lukewarm, you are neither cold nor hot, you find Christians, they cannot stand for the truth any long anymore. Today they are up, tomorrow they are down. Uh, when it is favorable, they are on fire for God. When things don't go their way tomorrow, they are as cold as cold can be. So God said, I will spew you out of my mouth. He said, I'm no longer going to watch over you. I'm no longer going to be there for you. Because you are lukewarm. And what is bringing this lukewarm is because they, lukewarmness is because they think they have money. They have good health. They have everything they want. And he says, verse number seven, the reason why you behave like that is because thou sayest, 
I am leech. And this is what Paul is saying. Tell, charge them that are leech. He said, because you say I am leech and increased with the goods. In other words, they have everything. In today's Christianity, in today's world, you tell somebody about Jesus Christ, they say, for what? I have all what I want. It is the poor that go to Jesus Christ so that he can bless them. He can make a way for them. He can give them money. But for me, I am okay. Not knowing the fact that they are rich and they increase in good doesn't mean they are all right. They are as poor as John Stuckey. They, they, they don't have nothing. Because thou sayest I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. This is what we are talking about. God has, they are not understanding it is God. Through his grace who has given them the opportunity to make money, to be comfortable. But they are supposed to use that to get something else which cannot fade away. And that is a problem. Because somebody is rich today. But tomorrow you are not certain that you still be rich. You may have money today, but it is not guaranteed that tomorrow, next week, you'll have the same money. And even if you'll have the same money, you don't know whether to be able to meet your needs that time. Because needs keep on changing. That is, we have had people that have money, but they got sick. And the money they had, the wealth they had, was not able to provide and to meet that need. Or what they needed was healing. What they needed was, uh, was, was good health. Not the money. Money is there. Goods are there. When it comes to money and goods, wealth, they don't want anything. But they are hurting. They have a condition in their body. That money cannot deal with that. They don't have peace. Peace cannot be bought by money or with money. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is what we are saying. You are saying, I am rich and increased with goods. And this is what makes many people to be lukewarm. They can never be on fire for God. And if they'll be on fire for God, it is for a season. And after that, they go back to the world. Because they have the money. And if they come, they'll just come because they want to give the pastor some little coins and some little money. And they feel, they, they think everybody, everything is, is okay. And the Bible says, not no and knowest not that thou listen to this you are rich you are increased with goods and have need of nothing but the bible says that you don't know that thou art wretched you are miserable and rich man full of goods in need of nothing but he is wretched he is miserable and in the eyes of God, he is poor. He is blind and he is naked. And yet he is rich and he increaseth with goods. But God is saying, you don't know. Why? Because you are not using these, what God has given you for the intended purpose. And you started wasting it. And you lie in danger of being now no longer a steward. So you have money back to the book of uh, back to the book of uh, first, called, first Timothy the sixth chapter and first number seventeen. So he is telling Timothy Paul that charge them that are that 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 are rich in this world, that they be not high minded, don't be cocky, don't be proud, nor trust in uncertain leeches. They are uncertain. You you are not sure you'll have it tomorrow. People go open fat bank accounts, save wherever they want to save their money. Overseas accounts, they would say. They, 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 will, they will buy properties. What are they saying? We are saving for tomorrow, but it is still uncertain. God is saying, Paul is saying, just warn them, charge them. Not to be high-minded, because God has entrusted you are a steward, and it is required in stewardship that you be faithful. Good health, be faithful. Use it for God's glory. Go to church, sing the songs of Zion, worship, follow and preach with a preacher. What are you doing? I am maximizing the opportunity that God has given me of a steward. So that tomorrow God can say, I will give you more responsibility. 
Because you have proven yourself with a little. I will give you more. But he that wasted, it will be taken. It is called uncertain leeches. It is uncertain because you will have it today. Tomorrow you will not have it. First Corinth, first Samuel. The second chapter and first number four. This is Anna saying. The bows of, the, bows of the, the mighty men are broken. They that were people that are well equipped. And they that stumbled are guarded with strength. First number five. They that were full, the leech in this world, have hired out themselves for bread. Look at that. They have hired themselves for bread. So the fact that you, that is why it is called uncertain leeches. Not to trust in the uncertain, uncertain leeches. Because you are not sure it will be there. And if, if it will be there, you are not sure it will be able to meet the demands. And the needs that you will have tomorrow. So that is why you use it trusting in God. That my faithfulness today, my faithfulness today will guarantee me tomorrow. That I will, when I'll be in need, God will give me everything that I want. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm talking about faithfulness. Because leeches, the Bible is saying, uh, Proverbs 23, verse number 5, leeches sometimes amount to themselves with wings, and they fly away. Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? So it is, you have all that, and I'm talking not only about money, but even time. There's a time we would come to church without care. Every day we want. A time came for four months, five months, we can't go to church. So you maximize the opportunity. The grace, take advantage of the grace. Paul said, if I can quickly go to the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter and verse number 10, uh, he is saying, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. It is the grace Paul acknowledged. It is the grace of God and his grace, look at this, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. I maximized the blessings of God that Paul had been given. The opportunity that God gave Apostle Paul, Paul took proper use of it. He used it for God's glory. And that is what I'm encouraging you, my brother. My sister, I'm telling you that which God has given you. Whether it is a sound, wonderful, sweet voice to sing. Sing because you don't know what tomorrow holds. And tomorrow you may need the more of God's grace. And if for you to get more of God's grace tomorrow, you must be faithful with, with what you have today. So that in your hour of need, he said, uh, uh, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. I used, but I labored. Look at that. Paul knew it was an opportunity. That opportunity had been denied somebody else. What you have, my brother, remember somebody else would have gotten it, would have been given. But God chose you by his grace. It is not that you earned it. It is not that, but the Bible is saying it a priest God. Paul said it a priest God, not you. It had preached God for Paul to have these revelations. Galatians chapter 1 and verse number 15. But when it preached God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. So grace separated Apostle Paul from everybody else. And Paul realized it was grace. Somebody sang and said, where would I have been if it was not for the grace of God? Who would I have been if it was not of the grace of God? And Paul understood that. And I want you to know that it is the grace of God that has made you to be a steward. You, you are not better than everybody else or anybody else, but God's grace separated you. God bestowed his grace over your life. And when God separated Paul by his grace, he revealed, verse number 16, to reveal his son in my in me. So Paul, he had no concern. He didn't even, he was not even, he was not even interested. He was on his way uh, down to Damascus to go and persecute the believers. So he had no inclination of the faith or preaching the gospel. But the grace of God when it came 
and he made apostle Paul another man. And he started working in him from the inside. And God gave him revelation that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately, that is the thing. Immediately, that is the immediate response. God requires that. You are given this, immediately take action. I confide not with flesh and blood. We are talking about a child of God realizing. So when Paul understood this, he didn't have all the qualifications. Uh, he didn't have what it takes to be a minister of the gospel. But it preached God. So when it preached God, First Corinthians, the 15th chapter and verse number 10, he said, I labored. He said, it is by the grace of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. That grace was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly. Than they all. He said yet not I. By the grace of God which was with me. Everything is grace. And that is what I'm saying. Don't abuse the grace. Don't abuse the call of God over your life. The gift of God over your life. So because remember. He's saying. If you waste it. Proverbs we were there 23 verse number 5. It has a way of frying away. Proverbs 23, verse number 5, the scripture says, Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not, that when you are not faithful with it, God will take it away. It is like uncertain leeches, Paul said. Uncertain leeches. If you are not using them properly, they are not. For leeches certainly make themselves wings. Now somebody that was doing so well today, Somebody that was comfortable today. Somebody, somebody that was in good health today. Somebody that was in sound mind today, tomorrow, you meet them in the streets, they have lost it. You find them in the streets begging. And you wonder what happened. No, when they were stewards, they wasted their stewardship. They abused the opportunity. And Jesus said, you may no longer. And that is the worry. If you don't use it properly, you may no longer. What God has called you to do, do it, my brother, with all your might, whatsoever. My hand find it to do. Do it with all your might. So you, you, because you, you, you don't know what will befall you tomorrow. And you'll be accused of not being faithful and wasting the goods. And Jesus will say, God will say, you are no longer a steward. And the, the blessings will fly away. The favor of God will fly away. So you, you are called. Back to First Timothy, the sixth chapter, verse number 17. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain leeches. It is uncertain. Why? Because it flies away. But in the living God who giveth us literally all things to enjoy. God is the one who gives us everything to enjoy. So as much as we have all these other goods, we must know how to keep them by using them faithfully. Verse number 18. You'll be able, they do good. That they do good. Now, you use that opportunity when you come for church service. You are doing good. When you are supporting that preacher with your finances. And that sister who is in need, you are doing good. When you support the needy, you are doing good. Whatever you do, you are doing good. Praise the name of the Lord. You are, you are doing good. You, you have to know that, that whatever you do will not go unnoticed. Tomorrow, it will be remembered that when you are in a position, you did good. You helped the poor. Giving alms by itself cannot earn you eternal life, but it is part of the process. It is part of the process. You'll be able that, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, ready to distribute, to distribute willing to communicate, 
that which you have and it's not only money but also your time your whatever it is that god has given you whether it's a gift of singing preaching whatever it is even working in that factory and that company and you're earning good money it is supposed to be distributed given share so that when you be in need when you be in need first number 18 19 when you be in need it says laying up in store for themselves a good foundation so whatever i have today as a preacher man the opportunity to preach i will use it so that tomorrow when i'll be in need i'll have already laid a foundation a good foundation again is the time to come that is evil times when maybe somebody will not be will have been accused of wasting but it will be remembered that they did when they were in a position they did good things they blessed like tabitha maybe i lead uh, maybe i lead before i read tabitha i lead acts the 10th chapter and verse number four acts the 10th chapter and verse number four and when he had looked on him he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. Not arms only, but prayers also. Because you are in a position to pray for people. You are in a position to pray before God. And you are able to give to the needy. And because of that, they went to the Lord as a memorial, as an offering. That was acceptable to God. And in your hour of need, Acts the ninth chapter and verse number 36, when Tabitha was in need, now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works. Look at that. Be able to do good. With the opportunity. Support that preacher. Don't stay at home when the doors of the church are opened. Don't withdraw your support when you receive your income. This woman, she never knew at one point she would need help. She never need, she never knew. But she took advantage of when she was in a position. This woman was full of good works and arms deeds, which she did first number that he, 37 and it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died whom when they had washed they laid her in a upper chamber first number 38 and for as much as ladder was nigh to joppa and the disciples had had heard that peter was there they sent unto him two men desiring him that he would not the delay to come to them first number 39 then peter arose and went with them when he was come they brought him unto the upper chamber and all the widows listen to this because this woman when she was in a position she took care of the widows the needy when she was in a position and her hour of need has come and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. Verse 40. She, they are saying, but Peter put, but, but Peter put, put them off all forth and knelt, knelt down and prayed. And that is how Dorcas or Tabitha was selected. That she had died. Look, the seventh chapter, another case like there. When she was in a position, she did good. Look, the seventh chapter and verse number four. We have a man lie there. Verse number three. And when he heard of Jesus, this is the centurion, uh, he, he sent unto him the elders of Jews, uh, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. Verse number four. And when they came to Jesus, these are the elders now, not even the men. The elders, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy. Look at that. His hour of need has come. 
He was worthy. The question is, my brother, when your hour of need will come, what will be presented to God for you? What will have what impact will you have had and made on people that knows you and you relate with? Will they be moved because of your actions and good works and intercede for you? As a steward that is faithful, that which God has blessed you with, that which God has given you with, are you doing what you are called to do so well and so faithfully you become a blessing to many? That in your hour of need, you'll have laid a good foundation for yourself. But somebody will stand there and even say, he is worthy. Will the pastor pray for you when he is praying for you and you are in need, you are hurting, you need intervention. And the pastor just tell God you are worthy of that healing. You are worthy of that provision. Why? You have sacrificed many times to make sure the church and the saints of God are comfortable. Oh, they are, they are lifted up in your songs, in your testimonies, in your service as an usher or a musician in the house of God. Or with your finances when you have been uh, paid your paycheck and, and you say this part of this will go to the church. And people know your faithfulness. People know your support. But when you are in need, these elders, the centurions, the centurion, let me read first number one. And it says, uh, and now when he had end, ended all his sayings, in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. Verse number two. And a certain centurion's servant who, who was dear unto him was sick and led it to die. Something dear to you, good health, dear to you. Your children, dear to you. Your work, dear to you. Your business, dear to you. But what have you been doing with what God has given you? Verse number three. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews. Because he could not go to Jesus. But the elders had a good report about this man. Beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. Verse number four. And when they came to Jesus, this is all what they said. They besought him instantly. They didn't even have to wait saying that he, who, he was worthy. That he was worthy for whom he should do this. He said, this man, master, this man is worthy. This man, he need, he have a sick child. He has a sick uh, servant. Uh, he, 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 he need provisions. And master, before even you say anything, he is worthy. He is worthy. Why is he worthy? First number five. For he loved our nation. And on top of that, he have built us a synagogue and this man when he was in a position he laid a good foundation he never trusted as it were in uncertain leeches because this time the money he had was not going to heal his servant and this servant was very dear to him this servant was one of his best servants and now he is sick kneeling death and he has all the money. Remember we said, you say you are rich. You say you are increased in goods. You say you are in need of nothing. Yet, the Bible says you are miserable. The Bible says you are wretched. You are poor. Yet you have all. Because that sickness cannot be healed by money. That sickness will not be healed by money. It will need a divine intervention. And it will need somebody to stand in the gap. Who will stand for me? When you cannot be able to stand for yourself. You need somebody. There are some times things will happen. You can't even pray for yourself. You need somebody that you have touched. Positively when you are in good health. And when you are in a position to stand for you. And intercede for you. And say you are worthy of that healing. You are worthy of that divine touch. You are worthy of that divine visitation. Why? Because when you are in a position, you loved the, the church. And you were involved in the building of the synagogue. Involved in the building of the temple. Involved in the building of the church structure. So the Bible is saying, you are worthy. They are saying, master, this man is worthy. We pray that you do it for him. Because a time will come. Your wealth, 
your leeches will not help you. Praise the name of the Lord. Talking about the rich man and Lazarus. In the book of Luke, the 16th chapter. And verse number 25. This is verse number 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, this is the rich man. Have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this frame. I am tormented. This is a man that had everything he needed. Lazarus was a poor man, but had God with him. Lazarus was a poor man, but he was righteous. The rich man had everything, but he was miserable, wretched, and poor in the spiritual. Verse 25, I like the answer, that answer. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. In when you are alive, when you are still having the leeches, everything you wanted, the wonderful T-bone steak, you will take it. You want to have a three-course meal, dinner, you will have it. You want to drive a good car, you will have it. In your lifetime, you did have everything good that you wanted. And likewise, Lazarus, he received evil things. Because he was poor, but he received God. So the leeches of this leech man turned out to be a torment. The evil that Lazarus has received turned out to be a comfort. So tomorrow you don't know where you'll be. And the question will be, give an account. What have you been doing with your steward? This rich man, he was not faithful in his stewardship. He never used the blessings to the glory of God. He never used the leeches to the praise of God. Let all things be done for God's glory through Jesus Christ. He never did that. Question I'll ask you, what do you do with what you have been given? Does God receive the glory? Does God receive the praise? Does, does the name of the Lord be glorified because of what you do with what God has given you? Praise the name of the Lord. Or are you trusting with, on these uncertain leeches that will fly away when it will be said you have wasted it and God will come and take that responsibility give to somebody else. Reminding you about Saul of Kish. Saul of Kish was ordained a, minister, a king of Israel. But he wasted. God, God, God told someone, go and ordain. I'm sending a young man by the name of Saul of Kish. And anoint him to be king of Israel. And he was given that opportunity. But it became a uh, first scripture I may want to look to. That uh, says, uh, when, when you are a little in your own eyes, God chose you. Talking of Lazarus, of uh, Saul of Kish. Uh, first Samuel, the, the ninth chapter, and first number 21. The Bible is saying in Samuel, and uh, 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 first number 21 of the book of first Samuel, the ninth chapter, and Saul answered and said, I'm not I a Benjaminite of the smallest tribes of Israel, and my family, the least of all the families of the tribes of Benjamin, wherefore then speakest thou so to me? When Saul was a humble man, a man that said, I don't have the ability, I don't have the power to do this by myself, then God used him. God used him. Chapter 15, the same book, and first number uh, uh, first number, first number 16, the Bible is saying, Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto, unto him, Say on, first number 17. And Samuel said unto Saul, When thou was little in thine own sight, charge them that are in positions, not to be high-minded. Charge them not to be proud. And so, when he was not in a position, when he was not occupying the parish, the kingship, he was humble. He was a man that was of a contrite spirit. He feared God. He said, I cannot do it. I am the smallest. My tribe is the smallest among the Benjaminites. And now things changed. When he occupied the office, 
things changed. He became proud. And that is the danger. And Samuel said, when thou was little in thine own, uh, in, our, in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel when you were little in your own sight? When you knew, unless God helps me, I cannot do it. But now you are full of yourself. I tell you to wait for seven days. You can't wait. Because you say you can also do it like the prophet will do. And the Lord anointed thee king of Israel. My brother, don't let the blessings of God take humility out of you. The more blessed you should be, the more blessed you are, the more humble you become. And you become the more you are entrusted with God's favor, God's blessings, the more faithful you become. The more trustworthy you become. Because if you are not, you are going to no longer be a steward. And we saw, because of this, God said, I have taken away the kingship from Saul and I have given it to another who was going to be humble. That was David. Because God's grace will never be exhausted. You abuse it, it is taken away, it is given to somebody else. And David, when he was given, he served God. And that is what I'm talking about. If you are called to give an account of your stewardship, what are you going to say? It has to be, you speak, if he that preacheth. First, Tim, first Peter chapter 4 and first number, first, number, uh, first number 10, where we were. As every man have received the gift. Even so, minister the same one to another. As God's good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Good stewards. You may come a good steward of the manifold grace of God. The manifold grace of God is different gifts. And all of us, we have different gifts. So what do you do with yours? Is it used for God's glory? Manifold grace of God is that which will enable you to be a blessing, to edify, to encourage, and to support. You are a steward. It is required. Finally, in 1 Corinthians, we were there, the fourth chapter. First number two, moreover, it is required in stewardship that a man be found to be faithful. You are a steward, my brother. You are a steward, my sister. And all what is required of you is faithfulness in your operation. Be like Paul. I labored more abundantly than they all. And because of that, God will lift you from grace to grace. You keep on being lifted up, being elevated, being favored. And more doors opening for you. Why? Because of your faithfulness. So God bless you. And I want to encourage you, my brother, my sister. You are a good steward of the manifold grace of God. All what is required for you is to give an account of the time, the resources, the blessings that God has given you. Use it for his glory. So that in your hour of need, like the centurion, in your hour of need, like Tabitha, then the people that you have, you have touched positively, the people that have seen your faithfulness will intercede and say, God, she is worthy. God, he is worthy. Why? Because we have seen their faithfulness. That is my prayer. I'm encouraging you. Lord, your leaves. Let us work for God. We sing a song in our callers, in our fellowship. We say, let us work for the, for the church while it's day. Let us labor. As we journey all the way, let's be willing to suffer, to see the truth less told. Let us give all what we have unto the Lord. Not what you have, the good health, the sound mind, the resources. Let us give all that we have unto the Lord in a life spirit. So God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Praying that God will continually bless your life. God will continually be, be with you and strengthen you as you labor and work in his vineyard. Let's pray for you. Let me pray for you, Father God. 
In the name of Jesus, I thank you for my viewers. God Almighty, I pray you will kindle their zeal for God and their work in the vineyard of the Lord. Let their faithfulness be seen by many, that even in their hour of need, somebody will stand in the gap and say they are worthy of that healing. They are worthy of that blessing. They are worthy of that deliverance. In the name of Jesus, I pray you strengthen them, Father God. Let them know that grace be in vain. But Father, give them the strength to labor and to work. In the name of Jesus, dear Father, I pray, even them that are weak, dear Lord, and them that are almost getting weary, Father, renew their strength. And if they lull their sleeves and they work for thee when it's still day, dear God, that tomorrow, my Father, when they are in need, Jehovah God, you will reward them. Let them lay a good foundation for them today. In the mighty name of Jesus, not to trust in their certain and certain leeches, but their Father to trust in you, dear Lord, and the true leeches. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pronounce healing to them that are sick. My God, even strength to them that are weak. In the name of Jesus, doors of blessings be opened over their lives and guide them and order them, Father, to the greener pastures. Be their shepherd. In the name of Jesus, in their businesses, in their offices, let them find favor. In Jesus' mighty name, I do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you. Looking forward again to see you again on our online service and also on our uh, indoor uh, fellowship church services in the church. And God will update you. Uh, we could be starting very soon our midweek services uh, in the church. Bible studies on Wednesday and Friday. And we'll keep you posted. So God bless you. God keep you. Amen.